will be the case because our forecasts uh, show that we run into a hard wall sometime in May. That was our hard stop that for whatever reason was forecast within our data. We had no real way of knowing what was going on. Uh, I had postulated any number of reasons that uh, we showed that our our process went bluey in May. And hey, it looks like there's also another possibility that I need to consider. That it, we could be 100% wrong. We get through May 20th, no global coastal event, and I shut it down just because it's 100% wrong. <laughs> and it's like, hey, great, great, great. In which case, I'll, you know, go on and um, uh, do other things and uh, say to hell with all of this. And, you know, we'll uh, have to just merely fight it out with the powers that be in their. Um, you know, fascist, pedophilic, uh, uh, weird lifestyle that they're trying to impose on everybody. Uh, which is, hey, that'd be, a, you know, um, probably a lot less, uh, nah, it'd probably be a lot less, um, uh, a lot more trouble than the global coastal event, but um, it'd be a lot, lot more boring. Um, in any event, though, so that, that is one possibility. We have to acknowledge that, you know, we've been wrong in the past and we could be wrong at this stage. And indeed, if there isn't any major... Um, if, if the temporal markers don't lay down between now and May the way that they're indicating in the data, then even that long-term set, even though it was very prescient and got the Banda Achi quake and a number of things that have occurred, um, then um, maybe it ran up to a certain point and it was just, just no good thereafter. Um, it seems unlikely because the the we've had some other indicators that have popped up recently that are validating uh, our current place in time. Some of them include the uh, things that have happened to myself and Kathy that were shown in the validation study. Other things include the uh, what happened to the Internet in 2010 and 11 with the Arab Spring rise and the shutdown of the various different forms or the attempt of the shutdown of various different forms of the Internet here and there. It actually did cause the forecast data holes that we saw showing up because we never ran it. We didn't run into the hard stop out of the blue. We had these holes in our data that popped up here and there uh, before we ran into this hard stop in May of 2013. And we'd forecast that these holes in the Internet would start showing up in uh, early 2011. We forecast that as early as 2008. They did show up in 2011, validating once again that set from which that forecast was made. And that set included the global coastal event crud. So again, we've got some, you know, self-referential integrity within the data process. If it's a, if it's wrong, it's a hundred percent wrong, and we're going to just cruise, and we won't have any of this crud show up. Uh, if it's um, accurate, we could have some degree of accuracy because of the ambiguity of language, and it, and it might be global. It might be nowhere near as bad as described. It might simply be southern hemisphere. We just have no way of knowing what the degree of accuracy of the sets will be, other than they were fairly accurate with the Banda Achi quake in stating ahead of time that 300,000 people would be killed, uh, which we put out a number of months ahead of time, and that the uh, nation would be driven back to a previous age, as in the sense of a Stone Age, uh, which pretty much happened to the island in Banda Achi. It didn't happen to the whole nation, and so that's where we have some level of um, uh, ambiguity. Uh, to some people, it certainly was being driven back to the Stone Age, but it didn't uh, happen to everybody there. And so the global coastal event, I think, will be like that. I think that there will be devastated areas along the coast and then uh, devastated areas inland and then maybe mountainous regions and other areas that are basically unaffected or will be unaffected for a very long period of time. And for them, life will go on in the new normal. That is to say, a new normal without global communications, a new normal with... Um, yeah, especially in North America, with uh, intermittent and fading uh, even national communications uh, because of atmospheric conditions and so on uh, will cause things like, you know, ham radio and, and uh, air-based radio and television to have difficulties, and there will be ish difficulties with satellites. So we, we may indeed have not a national infrastructure anymore. There's a lot of indicators within our global coastal event data that that is the case, and that's part of our problem. Because that occurred to us, occurs to the the um, place where the bots are being run from. Our forecasts as early as 2008 started showing our region and our work going dark, and we ran into a hard stop in May. That doesn't mean the world ends, but it means that our region may be so hard, um, hard uh, may have be so affected with such difficulties that we have not the ability to do any other forecast beyond that, and that's likely what the data is saying. But it could be that Europe and uh, vast quantities of Eurasia, Russia, and China remain virtually unscathed. 
Uh, same thing could happen to Africa in, in some central region. So uh, there's a huge part of humanity that just goes trucking right along, although they knew, now have to exist within an infrastructure where the rest of the humanity is uh, limping along and is going to be a real drain on activities for a while. Plus, it, um, uh, it means we have to do so without a certain level of infrastructure. Now, the good news in this is that the government's gone away as a result, at least in the Anglo-American empire, within our data sets for some period of time. And uh, the good news in this is we don't have to deal with the fascist bastards approach and stuff. And so from my viewpoint, because of some other earlier long-term data sets, and sorry it's taken so long to get to this particular uh, conclusion. But from my viewpoint, the global coastal event is a good thing in the end, so to speak, because it initiates the human renaissance, what I'm calling human renaissance 2.1. Um, this 2.1 uh, uh, renaissance uh, occurs uh, because so much of the North American area is devastated and has to be rebuilt. There is, in essence, the same kind of um, uh, renaissance that uh, Germany and Japan went through after they had the shit kicked out of them by World War II and had no effective infrastructure whatsoever. So all of their infrastructure had to be rebuilt because of bombing. Now ours is going to have to be rebuilt because of the global coastal event. And it's going to be especially difficult on the uh, eastern coast of the United States. I, I, this is un, not understandable to me at this point. I don't have enough data to make a conclusion as to why we have something that appears to strike on both coasts simultaneously, or near so. And here's our issue. Uh, the, 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 it's devastating. More de the global coastal event is described within our data as being more devastating to the North American continent because of what occurs here. And it's also described as being less devastating to the Eurasian continent. And we had long-term data showing that the North American continent was receiving aid for decades from uh, the Eurasian continent in the rebuilding process. And here's, here's our conclusion. Because of certain data sets and descriptions that come from the global coastal event uh, descriptors, as well as some of the stuff from the farsight.org, we've come to the conclusion that whatever the cause is, the uh, North America suffers a little bit uh, more than uh, other areas of the planet in the following ways. The West Coast is devastated um, at the level of a severe um, physical infrastructure and physical landform impact uh, all up and down the coast. So our ports on the West Coast here, everything, they're physically destroyed. On the East Coast, there appears to be less physical destruction, but far more uh, infrastructure and social disorder uh, destruction because of two um, levels of uh, uh, impact there. So it appears actually that the global coastal event is not ubiquitously felt on North America, that the West Coast feels it in the sense of a fierce kind of an earthquake e effect uh, abruptly that has a long-term recovery. The East Coast feels it less sharp, uh, more as a flood area that takes out the infrastructure at the same level. Electricity goes, uh, communications go, and so on. But in our case on the West Coast, the cables are severed. In the East Coast, it's because of massive flooding that drives the humanity uh, backward, uh, back inland. But also on the East Coast, there's a far greater level of degradation that occurs after the global coastal event due to the heavier population uh, base that is struggling to survive in uh, a much more urban environment. And so the, the devastation that we'd seen within the uh, sets that were associated with the social discord that followed the global coastal event. So these sets also originated in 2003, and they describe the riots in the Vatican for food. They describe, also describe riots on the East Coast, or mob actions. Let's just not call them riots, because it's just groups of hungry people that are wandering around looking for stuff to eat, basically, in a quasi-organized fashion. And um, these uh, mobs of people happen to run into some uh, what used to be former government bases that are exposed in the ground in the Maryland area uh, because of the uh, global coastal event, probably. 
and that there's still some level of uh, guards or um, supervision over these bases, and there's some level of contention, but that contention is quickly dispatched by the sheer size of the n- number of hungry people. And then we have the uh, looting of these bases, and at the same time that we have the looting of the bases, we have some level of the uh, um, distribution of secrets from government that later on, we're talking five and six years uh, later on, show up, uh, in in our data anyway, is being projected as being of a real concern at a planetary level. In other words, they they get exposed in the, this next year, but then uh, because there's no one around to read them, basically, uh, it doesn't mean a whole lot until four or five years later, and then they bec- can become uh, distributed ac- around the planet. That's at least our interpretation at this point. <coughs> so, uh, so that's a. Uh, uh, a verbal description of the global coastal event um, on the other side of it. So it's not the end of life. It's the end of life as we know it. It's a uh, description of um, a projection from a number of data sources that seems to have a level of validity to it just based on what the weird powers that be and their minions are up to. If they weren't doing anything, if the seed vault didn't exist, if there weren't uh, 6 to 10% of our gross domestic product being poured into cement underground these past 20 years. We didn't have the military doing all this weird stuff. We didn't have the debt levels just being run up as though they don't have to be repaid. If we didn't have the bankers trying to take over the uh, planet uh, outright instead of in their sneaky fashion the way they usually do it. You know, bankers can't operate out in the light. It's uh, the fact that we know their names and we can point to them and, you know, um, real soon means that, you know, people will start being uh, stitching their names in various different um, uh, ways into, you know, voodoo dolls and eventually it means they're g- we're going to hang the buggers because we know who they are and we can track them down. So this is very atypical. Bankers don't usually operate this way. Uh, the last thing any of the Rothschilds want, to, want you to know is who they are, where they are, what they look like. Uh, same thing with Rockefeller or any of the real powers that uh, push on all the minions. That's why the minions are out there. If you're going to hang somebody, they want you to hang Obama. They don't want you to hang the people that actually have their hands up his butt pulling his strings. So um, uh, the fact that they're operating in a quasi-open fashion is very disconcerting. Uh, same with Bilderbergers and all these weird things going on. So if we didn't have any of that, I would say this is all, you know, yet another science fiction fantasy. And it would make a good movie and, and uh, uh, a nice entertaining read at a, a multi-generational book, probably. But uh, we've got so many strange things occurring in reality. And there are so many strange um, physical things occurring with the sun and the planet. And we've had such a huge ramp up in earthquakes. It's like, well, we are headed for something. And then the remote viewing shows that indeed humans are prescient, as does my work. So I'm of the opinion that, you know, uh, the global coastal event will occur. The issue is at this stage what those words are going to mean to where you live and you during that period of time and afterwards and to all of us afterwards. Uh, Our data sets are such that we can't really project much beyond the shutdown in May. We had some data sets that went on, but the data was spotty. Uh, because obviously the we get hit with an impact that is such that it probably removes our electricity and this sort of thing, and it does so for some period of time. Uh, w- you know, in our case up here in the Northwest, we're already uh, that area of the planet that mostly <laughs> most of the guys in North America you don't hear about us in the news. <laughs> you know, you might hear about L.A., you might hear about Hollywood, you know, you might hear about Pasadena and San Francisco. May occasionally hear about Portland and occasionally hear about Seattle, but as far as uh, what most of the country thinks, you know, Seattle is the capital of Washington and and uh, probably Portland or Portland uh, as well. Um, uh, you know, Portland is a state as far as they're concerned back east. Anyway, though, um, so uh, our our participation after that has been our view of our participation after the global coastal event is limited and i suspect that up here we're going to get hit by an area that you know won't have a whole lot of electricity and will be thrust back to a previous age kind of a deal uh that's going to be the subject of another wujo that i think actually uh is really pertinent because i've always liked these pattern deals and i think we need to, to understand that um occasionally humanity has to go back to where we took a a big uh, turn in our path and take another alternative path, and universe provides us with these these opportunities. And I think that's what this global coastal event is. Now, I also know that from our data sets that were the long term projections, that the uh, Renaissance 
2.1 occurs shortly after or begins occurring shortly after and leads to the new electrics and all kinds of cool stuff. So I don't actually see the global coastal event as anything other than a challenge to get through. Uh, we know it's coming.